Hey guys, it's Goldie, and today I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about time bending with the new Royal Hourglass tool. Feel free to use the timestamps in the description if there's a particular topic that you want information about, but otherwise, let's get into it. Time bending is a new game feature that comes with the expansion pass, A Rift in Time. So first things first, you will need to own the expansion pack. <laughs> Once you get to Eternity Isle, just follow the main story until you get a quest with Eve, and she will give you access to the Royal Tool. So the Hourglass Tool helps you a lot during the main story, but aside from that, it has two other abilities. First off, it can remove the swirling sands that you find around the aisle. You just walk up to them, use the Royal Tool, and it'll give you a random amount of mist. And mist is like Eternity Isle's version of Dreamlight, so you're gonna need mist for a lot of things including crafting and unlocking new areas of the map. So it's good to remove those whenever you see them. Also, it's important to note that there are two different sizes. There's small and large swirling sands. This right here is an example of a large one. Um, and you can't actually remove the large ones until you upgrade your hourglass, but we'll get into that a little bit later in the video. The second ability that the Royal Tool has is to find treasures that are lost to time. So for this, you can be anywhere on the map, either in Eternity Isle or in the main valley. And all you do is activate the tool and a sparkling circle will show up above your head and the sparkles point in the direction of the treasure. I thought this was kind of fun when I first saw how it worked. So you just keep running as you activate the tool and eventually you'll start to see the circle turn like a dark yellow orange color. Oh, I think that might actually be inside of here. Hold on. Yep, it's back here. There we go, there's that yellowy orange, almost red color. And once you see that, you stop running and you hit the tool again. Oh, a little bit closer. There we go, and you'll find the treasure. Similar to other items in the game, there's only so many treasures that spawn in a given area. Um, and when you run out, it'll tell you, there's no more treasure in this area, look elsewhere. And in that case, you just have to wait for them to respawn over time. But every area that has a name on the map, so the Overlook, the Ruins, the Courtyard, all these different areas have their own, you know, stock or pool of treasures that you can go search for. The same thing goes for all the different biomes in the main valley. They each have their own pool of treasures that you can find. Another way to collect treasures you may have noticed is from these giant glowing orbs that are called time rifts. You go close to the orb and use the tool to open the time rift and it creates this giant ring of light around you. And while you're in this ring of light, you can find treasures continuously until the timer runs out. So you wanna try to be as quick as possible to get as many treasures as you can, but eventually the time will run out and the circle breaks and then yeah there's no more treasures <laughs> but um you'll find these orbs all over eternity isle and all over the main valley but they spawn in the same place every time which can be really annoying for decorating <laughs> as you can see there's one that always spawns right here behind this little circle of bushes that i've created and yeah i can't even open it right now i used to have an opening here so that i could at least activate it, but even once I activate it, I have to run around in this area to get the treasures and there's so many obstacles that it just makes it really annoying. So if you're planning on doing a lot of time bending, I would suggest clearing the area around the time rifts, at least until you have time bended, ten, time bended to your heart's content. <laughs> and then if you're done time bending, you don't plan to do any of that for a while. You probably either want to incorporate the time rift into your design or else just try to cover it up with your design, like with a bunch of vine walls or something, I don't know, but they're always in the same spot, so do what you will with that. Now, I'm gonna tell you something that I wish I knew sooner because the game doesn't explain it very well. Um, and I'm gonna explain it in terms of PC controls because that's normally how I play. I sometimes use a controller on the PC, but normally when I'm just playing off camera, I'll use the keyboard. But I'm pretty sure this applies to all platforms. You can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. But anyway, there are different options of how you can pull the treasure out of the time rifts and one option is better than the others. So when I try to collect treasure, as you can see, the game tells me to press E quickly. That's the instruction that it gives like right next to the tool. So that's what I've been doing. And 
honestly, it's been a big headache <laughs> because as you may know, E is the same key that you press to talk to characters and to pick up forageables off the ground. So when I'm in the middle of a time rift and I'm trying to go as fast as I can, running around like crazy trying to get the treasure, my character is stopping to pick up a flower or chat with Minnie after every treasure and it just wastes so much time. But then that's when I realized that in the bottom left corner, it tells you that you can use the right click button just as easily. And it still works. I don't know, you could probably hear my mouse clicking. It works just the same as pressing E and it's already the same key that you're using to look for the treasures. So when I accidentally click it too many times, instead of accidentally picking up a flower, it'll just show me where the next treasure is. And this makes this process so much more efficient. I probably went from getting around three or four treasures per time rift. And now with this trick, which isn't really a trick, I'm always getting at least six or seven or more treasures per time rift because I'm just so much faster. As a side note, the original time bending tutorial says that you can also press the space bar to do the same action of pulling out the treasure, which I found works the exact same as if you were using right click, but it's just less convenient. So yeah, <laughs> take it or leave it. It's good to have options, I guess. Anyway, moving on, let's talk about what these treasures even are. So if you go to the collections menu and for Eternity Isle and you go to the time bending category, this basically shows you everything that you can find and craft using time bending. So the hidden treasures are split into three categories. There's time bending parts, gifts, and fragments. And if you hover over each item at the bottom of the screen, it'll tell you where to find it and what hourglass level you need and um, how much it sells for. <laughs> Most of the time bending parts you can find without upgrading your hourglass at all, except for the ancient cores, which unlock as you level up your hourglass and also the glimmer, which is a unique one because you can only find this in the realms and you also need a level two hourglass to find them. Um, the next category is gifts. All of the gifts can be found without upgrading your hourglass and each gift relates to a different movie universe in the game. Additionally, there is a universe and hangout bonus for the gifts that boosts your chances of finding each particular item. So for instance, if you hang out with anybody from the Mickey and Friends universe, so that would include Mickey, Minnie, Donald, Scrooge, and Goofy. If you're hanging out with them and you're time bending, you're supposed to be more likely to find pink bows. Now players have reported mixed results on this mechanic. Some are saying that it doesn't really seem to make any difference if you're hanging out with the character or not. I personally believe that the percentage increase of finding these items is very low, unless if the particular character you're hanging out with is a time bender, or if you have a lot of like high level time benders in your valley. But that's just kind of my theory. If you have a better idea of how this mechanic works, feel free to tell me in the comments. Speaking of time benders, I should probably mention that there is a new time bending profession that you can give to your characters. And it works the same as any of the other professions. When you're hanging out with them while time bending, they will give you duplicates of whatever you happen to find, whether that be mist or treasures. If you've been playing for a really long time, like I have, you've probably already assigned professions to all of the characters in your valley. So it makes sense to assign time bending to the new characters that come with Eternity Isle, which is what I've done. Gaston, Rapunzel, um, even Jack Skellington, I got him as a time bender and I haven't progressed with Eve far enough to give her a profession. Um, I need to get on that, right? But you can also work on crafting time bending manuals to give to your level 10 villagers to turn them into time benders. Um, just be prepared that it takes a lot of time bending loot. Uh, you have to have 10 dingle hoppers, 10 wooden oars, and 10 pink bows, and it does take quite a while to stockpile those. <laughs> I've only been able to make one time bending manual so far and I gave it to Moana because she has a hangout bonus for the wooden ore. Uh, so I figure the first people that I'm going to give time bending manuals to are the ones that can help me gain these items to make more time bending manuals. <laughs> so just, um, you know, choose your characters wisely whenever you have the opportunity to turn them into time benders. Okay, we took a bit of a detour there, but back on topic, the third category of time bending treasures is fragments. These are different because there's only one 
type of fragment that appears per day and it's completely random. So to find out which one is available that day, you can come into the collections menu and check the availability and you just kind of scroll over to see which one says that it's available today, which Today is the wagon wheel. <laughs> the other option is just to go time bending and see which one you get. Uh, also notice that your hourglass has to be at level two or three for these. Um, and you can just check the collections menu to see which one it is. And each of these fragments is related to a specific piece of furniture that you can craft on the time bending table. And on that note, let's talk about the time bending table. This is a big topic because there's a lot of things that you can do with it. For starters, this is where you will upgrade your hourglass. Uh, I've already upgraded mine to level three, but you have three different upgrades. So the level one upgrade is 5,000 mist. The level two upgrade is 10,000 mist. And the level three upgrade is 15,000 mist. So as I mentioned earlier, you definitely want to be collecting as much mist as you can. But oddly enough, this is not the upgrade that I mentioned earlier that can help you with the larger swirling sands. That is a different thing, and we'll get to that in a second. But as far as these upgrades go, they give you access to the different um, time bending items that I talked about earlier. Also, there's a lot of different things you need the different levels for, and the Disney Dreamlight Valley Wiki has a really clean breakdown of this. So I'm gonna link that in the description for anyone who's interested and needs to know. <laughs> but um, you can find what each level gives you on this page. Uh, otherwise, there are six categories of things that you can craft with the time bending table. The first category is quest. Obviously, this would be where you go if one of the characters asks you to craft something for a quest. Um, the second category is ancient machine. You have the ancient cooker, the ancient gardener, and the ancient vacuum. These help you automate different tasks around your valley or your aisle. Uh, I am planning to make a video about this I haven't really fully explored this mechanic yet, but it's definitely on my list. So <laughs> if you're watching this after I've released that video, I'll put a link to it at the top of the screen. But anyway, there's the basic version and you can also upgrade to regular and advanced versions. The third category is furniture. And as of right now, there's only 13 furniture items that you can craft with the time bending table, which I thought was kind of weird at first, because I know there's so many crafting recipes in this game, but I realized that it's because these ones specifically use time bending loot to craft, whereas all the other new items you craft on the regular crafting table because they use the new materials that you find around the aisle, like flowers, gems, and metals, stuff like that that aren't necessarily related to time bending. But this is where you'll find the ancient fountain that everybody's been using in their dream snaps. It looks really pretty in pictures, so you might want to craft one of these. Next category is fence and paving and again there's not much here because these are the only ones that are built or crafted with time bending loot like for instance the stone slab path is made with an ancient radiator how that works I don't know I don't know <laughs> but um there you go there's two different pavements, one with a border, one without, and a new type of fence. The next category is the fragments that we talked about earlier. So once you get enough of a particular type of fragment, you can come in here and build the furniture item. And each of these is related to a different movie. As you can see, the Agrabah Palace model is for Aladdin. The Ice Harvester's palette bed is for Frozen, um, and so on and so forth. These all require glimmer and the respective fragment and mist to craft. All of these movies that are represented here, most of them we already have in the game or we already have items for them in the game, except for the Highland Family Tapestry, which is from Brave. Um, so that's a good indication that that is on the horizon, as well as the mythic vase for Hercules. Uh, we did get a hint for Hercules in that survey that they had us take a little while ago. I have a video about that if you wanna check it out but Hercules is definitely coming at some point in my opinion. And lastly, we have the special category. This is where you find recipes for scramble coin figurines that you can't get through normal gameplay. This section also includes the upgrades that I talked about earlier, but since I already redeemed them, they're not here, so I'll show that to you on the wiki. So right here on level one, you can see the different upgrades that you can apply to all of your different tools, and these help you to remove different obstacles around the aisle. So you have an upgrade for your hourglass that lets you remove large swirling sands. You actually have two upgrades for your pickaxe. One of them lets you remove the large copper rocks and the other one lets you remove the stalagmites. <laughs> um, there's a an upgrade for your shovel that lets you remove those swirly rocks. <laughs> Not the swirling sands, they're like rocks that have a 
swirl on them. And then there's a watering can upgrade to get rid of the evil plants that are in the wild tangle. Oh, and the stalagmites are in the glittering dunes. I don't know if I mentioned that. But yeah, so for some of these, I think there's two different upgrades. The first one would probably be at level zero for your hourglass. Um, it's been a while since I did it, but I'm pretty sure that's how it works. It says it's a potion, but it doesn't work like the other potions. You don't have to like apply it to your tool. It just automatically applies to the tool. And you'll need these to remove some obstacles to gain access to um, certain areas of the map that maybe like a bridge is blocked by some of these things and you have to get rid of them. So that's where you would do that. Also, as a side note, did anybody know that the, these were the stalagmites? <laughs> Was I the only one that had no idea what a stalagmite is? What is a stalagmite? I mean, it's a bit of a stretch, but <laughs> I'll give it to him. <laughs> Actually, this one looks a little bit more similar. Uh, anyways, what were we saying? <laughs> um, oh yeah, so the last thing that was a nice little surprise in the spe Gaston, what in the world? Do you see this? <laughs> okay, anyways, uh, another fun surprise that was in the special section of the time bending table is that you can actually craft an additional companion. It's the ancient robot. And once you craft it, you can equip it in the companion section of your wardrobe, just like all the other companions. He's super cute and he gives you an additional pose with the camera that allows your character to sit cross-legged, which can be fun and useful for dream snaps. But yeah, that about sums it up for time bending. It's crazy how much new stuff in the game is directly related to this feature. I actually really like time bending, even though it can be very grindy at times. But if you learned something new from this video or you just enjoyed it, please leave a like and consider subscribing for more Disney Dreamlight Valley content. And I'll see you guys in a new video soon. Bye.